investment banks in the world who are making more money trading than you can ever Today's video is sponsored by Underlucky Stars. Commemorate a special time in your life or the life of a loved one with a personalized star map. More on them in a bit. In this channel's short lifetime, we've covered endless men who made their mark. Many became kings, emperors, leaders of movements that changed the course of history. But even among this pantheon, it's rare to find men or women who went one step further, who became not just a human figurehead, but the focal point of an entire religion. Well, in this episode, we're going to meet one such man, Haile Selassie. As a mere mortal, he reigned over the nation of Ethiopia for 44 transformative years. Yet his longest lasting legacy likely has its roots over 12,000 kilometers away. In the Jamaica of the 1930s, the Rastafari religion coalesced around the idea that Selassie was not just a powerful man, but literally God. Today, an estimated one million followers of Rastafarianism subscribe to this belief. Yet, who was the historical figure at the center of it all, and how did he become this religion's messiah? Born in a mud hut, Haile Selassie rose through the ranks of Ethiopia's royal family to become its last emperor. As leader, he weathered coup attempts, invasion, and resistance to his progressive reforms, only to, at last, be overthrown by his own people. Powerful, tragic, and nuanced. This is the life of Haile Selassie, Africa's King of Kings. It was July the 23rd, 1892, when the boy who would become Haile Selassie was born into a life of both privilege and poverty. Poverty because his family, like nearly all 26 million of Ethiopia's inhabitants, lived in a simple mud and wattle hut within a vast rural country still wedded to the feudal system. And privilege because unlike most Ethiopians, Selassie had the aristocratic background to escape this life. Members of the powerful Amhara tribe, Selassie's family claimed they could trace their roots all the way back to Emperor Menelik I, himself supposedly the child of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. This meant that Selassie was also related to the current Emperor Menelik II, and you better believe this conferred certain advantages. As a boy, Selassie was educated by French missionaries. His father, Ram McConnell was governor of Harap. Speaking of Selassie, now might be a good time to mention names. Although he's gone down in history as Haile Selassie, the future emperor was actually born to Fari McConnell. Like his father, he was elevated to the title of Ras or Duke. It's from the fusion of his title and name, Ras Tafari, that Rastafarianism gets its name. And while we're on the subject, we should probably also discuss Ethiopia. If you paid attention in history class, you might be under the impression that Ethiopia in this era was called Abyssinia, which it was, but only by outsiders. For this reason, we're just going to refer to it as Ethiopia throughout, just as we'll be calling Tafari Haile Selassie, even though he wouldn't take on that name until 1930. Got it? Well, great. So let's move on with today's story. When Selassie was just a teen, his father died. But while this doubtless hurt, it also took him closer than ever to the center of power. Taken in by the emperor, Selassie became part of Addis Ababa's political elite, eventually becoming promoted all the way to governor of his dad's old province. It was while working there that Selassie began to truly grasp Ethiopia's problems. While the empire was thousands of years old, the nation itself seemed like it was stuck in the Middle Ages. Dominated by a landowning nobility, Ethiopia had few roads, few large buildings, no organized healthcare, and little in the way of government infrastructure. In essence, it was a feudal society. And that was worrying. This was the heyday of colonialism, when European powers were gobbling up so much African real estate that very, very few places hadn't been absorbed into some empire or another. Selassie was quick to define that if Ethiopia didn't modernize, it too would become little more than an exotic outpost to be exploited. But what could he do as a mere governor? Although he was related to the emperor, Selassie wasn't in line for the throne. When Menelik II died in 1913, it was the good-looking playboy Li Jiasu who replaced him, not the orphan Selassie. As with his father's death, though, Selassie would soon manage to turn this latest setback into an advantage. Iasusi had an image problem. His ancestors had been Muslim in a nation where the elite were all Christian. So, when he started making moves to desecularize society, those same elites didn't see a serious attempt to improve the lot of Ethiopia's religious minorities, 
but rather a diabolical plot to make them all worship Allah and stop drinking their beloved Tej. As head of the Christian opposition, Selassie led the charge in accusing Yasu of being an apostate, a traitor, and generally just a giant douchebag. When in 1916 Yasu also started making overtures to World War I central powers, it was the last straw. Yasu was overthrown that September, replaced with Melanick's daughter, Zuditu. But since the Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I am Emperor Lu. And uh, Emperor Haris Lassie, the Black Emperor of all Black Emperors. All right. So also, I give him a shout. I give a shout out to uh, Mr. Um, the Biographics. Thanks for the program. I'm doing a response to this video. And this is part one. So I'm gonna do two, two more parts of this video. All right. So Emperor Haris Lassie was one, one of my major influence. All right. He was one of my idols, one of my major influence. Uh, and like I say. Selassie, I, yes, I was, I follow Selassie now for the last 30 years now, but for me personally, he's not the, he's not the ultimate God. I mean, the ultimate creator is Jehovah the creator, but, but as a immortal in the flesh, Selassie is a black, black emperor of all black emperors, all right? You're going against anyone, Miss Looney, Napoleon, no matter who, all right? Because I'm sick and tired of society promoting Genghis Khan, Napoleon, and every other European emperor, like uh, Caesar, Atavius, but never they get this, get this emperor recognition because because he's a black emperor. All right. So besides Jehovah, besides Jehovah the Great, Selassie is the one who I emulate. All right, uh, an emperor of emperor of all emperors. All right. I'll be back.